Assalamualaikum and uh, good evening and good day. Assalamualaikum sir. Assalamualaikum sir. Uh, we have uh, 20 students now and I think uh, we can start. It's 9, 9, 10, 9, 10 uh, p.m. Uh, 21st of November 2020. So, uh, everybody okay today? Okay. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, sir. Okay. Uh, can you uh, hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, today, basically, that I'm going to go through the lecture on the AC network. Most probably that uh, okay, we are going to cover the uh, the capacitor and and yes, inductor. Sir. Okay, and uh, most probably that the, the test one will cover up to uh, lecture today, eh? or this chapter, chapter four, eh? and. Um, for the AC response, most probably that we we'll go into the second test. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do today is that uh, I'm going to go through the lecture on the AC network analysis. We have about 33 slides, okay? and hopefully that we can uh, finish uh, tonight. Okay. So now I'm going to share the slides. Okay, everybody can see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, uh, you, you have downloaded uh, the, the, the slides, right? Chapter 4, AC Network Analysis. Okay. So, the, um, In this lecture, we are going to cover the capacitance and inductance. So basically, that we have the storage uh, uh, energy storage elements, eh, circuit elements, which is capacitor and inductor. So electric devices may exhibit uh, energy storage properties. Eh? If the what call it um, the resistor, that one is actually. Uh, just absorb the energy and it does not store. So it does not uh, store the energy. But uh, there are devices uh, which exhibit uh, the energy storage capacity. So if you look at the, what we call it, uh, mechanical uh, device. So uh, for example, like spring or flywheel, basically that those are the elements which can store mechanical energy. So in electrical, uh, engineering also, we have uh, devices or components or elements which store energy. So in this case, uh, the two distinct mechanisms for energy storage exist in electrical circuits are capacitance and inductance, both of which uh, led to the storage of energy in an electromagnetic field. So it's actually store uh, energy in the electromagnetic field. So this is the capacitor. So first we go through the capacitor first. So if you look at the, uh, the photo here, so these are actually example of the capacitor, right? So which are leaded uh, uh, type where you have two, uh, two, leg, uh, two legs here. One is longer than the other. This is one leg and this is another leg. So normally the, the longer one is the positive and the shorter one is negative. Am I right? So basically normally that this is the, the marking here, the, the dark streak. This uh, normally is the negative. Yeah. A cap and there are some other type of capacitor these are the SMT capacitor, the uh, surface mount technology capacitor. Uh, these are also capacitor. Uh, all these are types of capacitor. Right? So uh, what is a capacitor? A capacitor is basically a device, uh, a device that store energy. Okay. In the, yes. 
in the form of charge separation when appropriate polarized uh, by the electric field or by the voltage. So basically that uh, a device that you have um, two plates, uh, uh, two, uh, what do you call it, this, uh, two plates which is separated from each other and is polarized uh, by the uh, uh, voltage source, uh, then therefore you have one side is positive and another side is negative. Uh, so it has a positive charge and negative charge uh, on the on the plates. Uh. It is made of two parallel conducting plates that are separated by a dielectric material. So you have one plate and another plate. And in the middle here is a dye electric uh, material eh? with a permeability of epsilon. Eh? So the plates accumulates energy, uh, electric charge when connected to the power source. One plate accumulates positive charge and the other accumulates the negative charge like the one that, that I mentioned just now. Eh? So how do you... What is the formula for the capacitance? Basically, it's given by this formula. Right? Capacitance is equal to uh, epsilon A divided by D. What is A? A is the surface area of these plates. Uh, the area of this. And D is the separation uh, between the plates. And epsilon is actually given is the the dielectric uh, permeability. So basically, that uh, the uh, permeability of the material between these two plates. If it's air, then is given by this value: eight point eight five four times ten to the power of minus twelve farad per meter. So this is the permea. Uh, permittivity of air, right? So, if we have a different uh, material, then we have a different value. We have air, we have paper, uh, we have uh, plastic. Eh? It depends. So, a circuit symbol for a capacitor is given by this, this symbol, right? You have... Uh, it's either uh, like this or uh, like that. Eh? So it can be both. Eh? It can be either way. Eh? If you have uh, something like this, then basically one side is positive and another side is negative. For this one, it's interchangeable. Right? So the presence of an insulating material between the conducting plates does not allow for the flow of DC current, thus a capacitor acts an open circuit in the presence of the DC current. However, in the AC current circuit, a capacitor acts as a short circuit. So let's say that if you have a circuit like this, okay, okay, if you have that, basically this is a uh, DC uh, DC voltage, so this will act as an uh, open circuit. If, uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Everybody can yes, hear sir. me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you have yes, sir. If you have a uh, AC signal, eh, AC voltage, then this will act as a short circuit, the capacitor. That's how the capacitor behaves. Right? In DC, DC current is an open circuit. AC current in a short circuit. Okay. What is a capacitance?
Capacitance is basically a measure of the ability, eh, measure of the ability of the device to accumulate or store charge. So the equation for the capacitance eh, is given either by this and by or by this. This is C equal to Q over V. Eh? The capacitance is equal to the um, uh, electric charge in Coulomb divided by the voltage between the capacitors plates in volts. Or it can also be uh, calculated based on the dimension. Eh? You see the permittivity epsilon of the material. Uh, I mean, of the dielectric, uh, multiplied by the area uh, of the plate, divided by the distance between the plates. Okay? And the units uh, is in Farad, or written in a capital F. Okay? The IV relationship for a capacitor. The capacitor current is given by this formula. I of T is equal to dQt over dt or equal to C dV T over dt. Okay? So this is the formula given. Okay? And capacitor voltage is given by Vc of T is equal to 1 over C the integration from minus infinity to t of ic t prime d t prime okay so what you need to do is that you need to be able to use this formula eh? i'm i'm not going to derive this formula for you eh? you you don't need to know how the the derivation but what you need to know is that how to use this formula so the equation indicates that the capacitor voltage depends on the pass current through the capacitor up until the present time. So basically that the voltage depend on the current from the minus infinity up to T. Okay. If the initial voltage of the capacitor at a time T equal to T naught is V naught, then Vc of T is equal to 1 over C integration from T naught to T IC T prime D T prime plus V naught. This is called an initial condition. For T is greater than T naught. So this is the initial condition. Right? Initial condition happens basically that when, for example, at T less than zero, you have a circuit like this. Okay, you have a capacitor here, and you have let's say uh eh? uh voltage or current eh? and you have something like that eh? okay this is r load this is r this is a capacitor so at t greater than uh, less than zero basically that you have the current flowing here eh? so current flowing here so what happened with that this capacitor will be charged will be charged so when you take out this then this capacitor is actually is actually uh, charged so it has a certain voltage here so this is actually the v naught uh, at for example let's say at t naught you take out the source so therefore this one becoming the source so then you have a current flowing here so th this one is no current because open here so this is what it means by v naught so the energy storage in the capacitor is given by this formula wc of t is equal to one half c vc square of t so this is the energy stored in a capacitor at a given time of t okay? 
and the unit is in joule. So, if I is flowing into the negative, the positive terminal of the capacitor, so the charging I is positive. So basically, it's charging, okay. and the discharging is when I is negative. So let's say, okay, if this way is positive, basically that is charging the capacitor. Okay. When this is negative, then what it means is that it's a discharging. So discharging is current is flowing this way in a positive because this way is negative. Eh? If the this is what it means by this statement. If I flowing into the terminal, if this direction is considered as positive, therefore, if I is positive, I mean this charging this capacitor. If I is negative, basically that is it means it's flowing this way. So this is a discharging. So because the current is flowing this way, this discharging the capacitor. A capacitor is an open circuit to DC eh? because dV over dt is equal to zero. Its voltage cannot, ch cannot change abruptly. Eh? It cannot change abruptly. It means that, let's say you have this is voltage, this is time, this is voltage. Let's say eh? you have a DC that. So basically, it cannot drop like that. It has to, uh, from here, it will slowly drop uh, and stay like that. Even if it's charging, let's say it's charging time and volts. Let's say when it's charging, it cannot just go like that. It has to go. Like that right? so it's gradual it cannot change abruptly and the voltage cannot change abruptly okay right? so in a circuit you have maybe something like this right? you have a few capacitors uh, connected in parallel so when you want to do when you want to do the analysis you need to find the equivalent capacitors, ca capacitance. So the formula for uh, capacitors in parallel is that you add uh, the value of the capacitors. So C equivalent to C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 and anti plus Cn. So this is actually the opposite of the resistors. Remember? We still remember the R equivalent? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, mm -hmm. capacitor in parallel yes, is summation. Basically, that the summation of V N uh, for N equal to 1 to N. This is the C equivalent. Right? It's the summation. So, if you have a circuit like this, so this can be calculated using this formula and can be written as that. So the capacitors in parallel combine according to the same rule used for resistors connected in series. So capacitors in parallel using the same formula for resistors in series. Dito balik. Right? If capacitor in series in, in, in parallel, you add the summation. So therefore, I just like you for the resistor in series. So therefore, for capacitors in series, it actually use the same rule as resistors in parallel. So if you have a capacitor in series like this, so the C equivalence 
can be calculated using that formula and it can be drawn like that right okay any questions so far no sir okay example no sir okay let's say you are given this specification capacitance of 100 farad uh, voltage basically that uh, is at 2.5 volt and peak at 2.7 volt and the rated current is 25 amps 25 amps so find the charge separation at nominal voltage so nominal voltage is this is actually nominal voltage and time to complete discharge at maximum current rate so the formula uh you want to find the charge so q is equal to c v from the formula uh, because c is equal to q over v so therefore charge is equal to c v what is c c is given as 100 farad what is the nominal voltage because you want to find at the nominal voltage so the nominal voltage is 2.5 volts so from your calculation so you get 250 coulomb so that is the charge eh? in the capacitor <laughs> So this is the answer for this part. Huh? For the second part, time to complete discharge at maximum current rate. So what is the time to discharge? What is the rated current? Is 25 amps. And you know from the formula, I is equal to dQ over dt. Huh? Or this actually uh, similar to the change of Q over the change of T. So, so therefore, what you, what we need to find is that you want to find the time. So, I is equal to delta Q over delta T. So, therefore, time delta T is equal to delta Q over I. What is delta Q? Because you want to dis completely discharge. So basically that from 250 coulomb down to zero. So delta Q is 250 divided by the maximum rate eh, of discharging, which is 25 M. So it's equal to 10 seconds. So it will take 10 seconds to discharge 250 coulomb rated current of 25 amps clear for this example okay another example we want to, to find the capacitor current you are given yes sir you are given the value of the capacitor and you are given the voltage curve eh, of the capacitor so you need to find the capacitor current how are you going to do that how are you going to do that what is the relationship between uh, the voltage and the what is the relationship between the current and the voltage of the capacitor remember is it the formula sir yes the yeah. dqt over dp for current 
Dia Q over P. Because, no. Because the formula is given. Okay. You, you look at this. Given is the voltage. Right? This is the yes, voltage. Sir. This is the voltage curve given. So what is the formula for current? The relationship between this. This is basically I T equal to C C D V over D T. So D -T. the relationship is between that is the derivative of the voltage. So what do you need to do to find the current? So you need to differentiate this curve. So now So this ICT equal to CDVDT is equal to, this is the, C is 10 to the power of 7, here, yeah. uh, 0 0.1 microfarad, 0 0.1 microfarad is actually 10 times the power of 7. And the derivative of voltage is given by this. See that you need to differentiate this. Uh, you need to differentiate 5, 1 minus E minus T over 10 to the minus 6. Uh, so this is actually, if you uh, take the derivative, so you get what? Minus what? So you get this. Yeah. Basically, just now you get 5, 1 minus uh, e to the minus t over 10 minus 6. Okay. So if you take derivative, basically this is 0 minus 5 over 10 minus 6. Yeah. Um, no, it is minus, you have minus signs there. So basically minus that, e to the minus t over 10 to minus 6. So minus to minus become positive. So that's why you get uh, 5 over 10 minus 6, e to the minus t over 10 to the minus 6. So you get this. So, ICT, IC of T is equal to this. You simplify this, eh? Because 10 to the minus 6 cancel, so 10 to the, then you get 10 to the minus 1. 10 to the minus 1 times 5 is 0 0.5, and E to the minus T over that. So, this is the curve, the current curve, okay? Eh? Clear? Clear? Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So basically that this is the voltage curve for the capacitor and this is the current curve of the capacitor. Another example. You are given the Current is equal to zero for t less than zero second. So here zero, then um, ten milliamps for between zero to one second. Here is ten milliamps and zero from one to infinity. So this is what you have. Uh, for the current curve. And it is given the initial value Vc of t equal to 0 is equal to 2 volts and you are given the capacitance of 1000 microfarad. So you need to find the 
v c of t. So what is v c of t? v c of t is that from the formula one over c integration uh, from infinity minus infinity to t of i of c t prime d t prime and plus v naught. Okay, v naught is given as two volts, and from this curve, you start from zero instead of minus infinity. Start from zero. So now, from here, so therefore you get this formula. I over C take from zero to one because the rest is actually zero. So from one, I dt prime plus V naught. So equal to one over C T plus V naught. Okay. Okay. So one over C is one over 1000 microfarad. Okay. One thousand microfarad. Times T. Okay. Basically, that. Uh, so you have this. Eh? So this two is here. You get that. And this 1 over 1,000 times 10 to the minus 6 eh, of T. So, 1, 2, 3. So, minus 3. So, becomes uh, 1,000 T. 1,000 T, this is actually in milli, the unit. So, to make it in volts, so, you divide by 1,000. So, so, uh, so, is it 1,000 divided by 1,000? So, because like this, 1 over C. Okay. What is 1 over C? 1 over 1 times 10 to the minus 6, right? Yes, sir. My okay. Clear. So that is 1 over C. But for this, it's 10 milliamp. So 10 milliamp is. 10 times 10 to the minus 6, right? Yes, sir. Ah. So basically that is <clears throat> 10 eh, times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1,000 times 10 to the minus 6. So this goes, okay, clear. Okay, sir. So you get that. Right? So this is actually in what? In volts or millivolts? 10,000 millivolts. Mm. Okay. So basically that this is so uh, uh, what you get from zero to one second from here to here. Then after that, it stays at 12 volts at the, this maximum. Any question on this?
another example determine the energy stored in the ultra capacitor of the example 4.1 just now so this is the data from the 4.1 right so this is the uh, what we have calculated eh? is uh, 250 uh, previously is 250 coulomb okay. so the energy stored we can use by this formula so basically we don't need to use uh, this uh, what do you call it uh, this value because we can use this formula so from here c is given 100 farad okay and voltage is given at nominal voltage is 2.5 so therefore we just plug in the value into this equation so you got 312.5 joule okay that's how you calculate the energy stored basically you need to know the value of the capacitance and the voltage nominal voltage of the capacitor and you just plug in the value and you get the energy stored in the capacitor so now this is actually for you to find the equivalent capacitance in the capacitive network how do you do, do that so you need to remember that uh, for equivalent uh, for the parallel uh, for parallel capacitor is c plus for series Okay, you have to remember that. So now, if you have this, which one that you need to do first? Which part? From here, if you want to find the C equivalent here, then you have to start from this end, right? Right? Yes, yeah. Just like the register. So this one is basically in parallel with this. this yeah, one is parallel with yeah, this. So basically what you do. So you do these two first. Right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. this is actually two microfarad. Parallel with four microfarad, what happened? You add, right? Plus the rules. For parallel. So now you have six. Yes, sir. Six microfarad. So you have something like this, right? So you have six here, you have three here, you have two here, you have three here, you have two, right? So now what happened? Which one that you do first? Uh, series six and three. Okay, you do this. So Basically, 1 over CQ is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. So this is equal yes, to sir. 1 over 6 plus 2 over 6. So 3 over 6, so equal to 1 over two. 2. So it becomes... Okay, it becomes something like that. Eh? So this is two, this is two, uh, this is three, this is two. So three, now, three. this two, right? So become four. So three, four, and twelve. Okay, this is twelve. Okay, becomes like that. So now, what happened? These are all in series. Mm -hmm. So, in series, basically, C equivalent is equal to 
1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12. So you get um, 4 plus 3 plus 1 over 12. So it's equal to uh, 12 over uh, 8. So, uh, sir, pardon, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, for the 2 and the 4, actually yeah. we need to times and plus, right? Or huh? must plus? Uh, come like, again? Uh, 2 times, I mean the 2 times 4 and then uh, divide by 2 plus 4. Not like Which that. One? This one. This one. Uh, for the above 3. Above three, this, this one, right? This. Ah, yes, sir. What is the formula? Uh, two times four and then over two, uh, two plus four. No, are you sure? Capacitor. Uh, no, I'm just asking the Capacitor. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Here. Parallel. Oh, okay, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay. Parallel is the opposite of the resistance. You have to remember, for capacitor, it's opposite of the resistance. Basically, the equivalent of a parallel capacitor, you add. Okay, remember that. Don't get confused with the resistance. Noted, sir. Okay. Noted, sir. Okay, because this is actually important. Most of it will be in the test. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually the answer. 40 micro farad. No, this is a, a different example. Okay. So then basically this uh, 12 over 8. Uh, so becomes what? 12 over 8 is... Uh, 1.5 1.5 yes sir 1.5 micro farad right. so that is the c equivalent 1.2 uh, 12 over 8 lah 12 over 8 is basically uh, 6 over 4 uh, 6 over 4 is 3 over 2 so one over one point five, right? Second question: Can you do this on your own? Can you get a forty microfarad? I uh, have to try. So basically, that okay? C equivalent from here. Then you start from here. So you can do this first. This combination. So 1 over 60 plus 1 over 120 and reciprocate. So 2 plus 1, 3. So 120 over 3. This is actually 120 over 3 microfarad. So 40. So this is 40 microfarad. 40 microfarad plus 20 become 60 microfarad. This one is 50 plus 70. Uh, ah, this one is micro, yeah. Missing is micro. So 50 plus 70 is 120 microfarad. So 120. Parallel with 60 is 40 microfarad. You follow me? Yes, sir. So basically, so basically, uh, C equivalent is equal to um, this one is parallel, right? So uh, 60. Parallel with 120, okay. Then parallel with 20, okay. Then you um, 
Parallel is basically, okay. So basically, C equivalent is equal to, the first one is 60 plus, no, uh, 60 uh, series. Series, basically, you, macam uh, mana saya nak buat, eh? Basically, tak, tak, tak boleh buat macam resistor. So, you have to go through. So, this is the first one that you calculate. This is the second one you calculate. This is the third one you calculate. And combination is the fourth one. So, you get 40 microfarad. Right? Okay. Kalau saya tulis macam ni, nanti you confuse. Actually, boleh tulis. Tapi kena kena ingat, basically this is capacitance. Capacitance terbalik daripada resistor. So, C equivalent is actually equal to 60 parallel 120, the first one. Then, parallel with 20. Then, series. Uh, this is not add. Eh? This is series. Eh? This is series. With... Uh, 50 parallel with 70. Uh, this is not add, this is series. Example number three. Find the voltage across each of the capacitor in the circuit shown. Okay. How do, are you going to find that? The voltage divider, sir. Hmm. How are you going to do voltage divider? The... Nodal mesh analysis. Cari charge dulu, sir. Huh? Cari charge dulu. What is the formula of the charge? Q equal to VC. Q equal to? VC. 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 Q equal to V over C. C. Huh? Betul ni? Alah sir. Ha? Betul tak formula ni? Uh. Sir, C equals to Q over V. Q equals to CV. Q equals to CV. Q equals to... Q equals to VC sir. Q C equals to VC. V. So... You want to find the voltage. Q, you don't know. You only know C. Two circuits. Find C equivalent, sir. Find C equivalent. Hmm. How? How, how, how? You can find the C equivalence. C equivalence boleh cari daripada dalam the circuit ni, sir. Find? C equivalence. Betul ke? Yes. First. First, basically that you combine this. What is the equivalent uh, uh, capacitance? Using C. 1 over 60 plus 1 over, over 60. Is equal to is basically that um, uh, one plus uh, two over sixty 
is equal to 60 over, actually 60 over 3, so it's 20. Eh? 20 and 20 is 40. Okay, it's equal 40, right? This? Yes, sir. So, so this is 40, this is 40. So what is the V1? Half, sir. Half. Half, right? So yes, sir. this becomes 30 and this becomes 30. So this point is basically 30 volts, right? Yes, sir. So now you have to divide between these two. Okay. How are you going to divide? Voltage divider, sir. Voltage divider. Because it was his. If the resistor, okay, if the resistor voltage divider is that, uh, is V2 is equal to R, let's say, 1 over R1 plus R2 V1, right? So if you want to find for, no, let's say we want to find the, let's say, the VA, this is VR1, eh? if you want to find that, right? VR1 is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 VA, right? What about for the capacitance? Is it going to be the same or to be different? If you calculate, eh, if you calculate the equivalent capacitance is the opposite formula. If it's parallel, it becomes series. If it's series become equivalent to parallel of the capacitance. So therefore, for the voltage, uh, it's also reverse, right? So, yes. what happened is that, so the voltage of a smaller capacitance will be higher than the voltage of the higher capacitance. So, what is the ratio between these two? One to two, right? One to two, yes. So, one to two. So, basically that, this will be two, this is will be one in terms of the voltage because the ratio of the capacitance is two to one, right? So this yeah. becomes 20, this becomes 10 volt. Betul? Uh, so I not so understand how 20. it becomes 20. Huh? Uh, can repeat again because I not so understand just now. Okay. Over here is actually 30 volts, right? That you need to divide between these two. Right? What's the ratio of this 60 to 30? Basically, ratio 2 to 1, right? If it's a resistor, this one will be higher voltage than this, right? Because this twice, but for capacitor is the ballet. This should be lower than this. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Clear. Yeah. So that is the ratio. Yes, sir. Uh, two to one. So when it's two to one, so the two become half and the one becomes double. Right? So that's okay. why you get 30, 30, 10, and 20. Next example. 
in the circuit is given. Alright, understand, sir. Vt is given by that function, right? Given by zero for my minus infinity to zero, and t for zero to ten second, and uh, ten for ten second and infinity. So this is Vt. So you need to find the energy stored in the capacitor for all time. So what is the formula for the energy stored? Formula for energy stored is that WC of T is equal to one half C VC of T square. Okay. So, so VC of T is actually this given by this, right? So this is given by that. So you need to calculate for one, two, and three, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, interval, right? So basically that uh, this curve actually like this, uh, zero, that, and that. So this is at 10, this is at zero. So, so for this part is zero. So velocity of T is equal to one half of 0 0.1 times zero square equal to zero for uh, t is uh, minus infinity to zero. Okay, one. The second one is is equal to one half zero point one t squared t square. Okay, so this is equal to uh, one over Four. twenty. T square, right? Yeah. Four, zero, T to ten. So another one is omega C T is equal to one half times yeah. zero point one times ten square equal to uh, 100, so 10 over 2 is equal to 5. For T is in B, for uh, between 10, T to infinity. So basically that you have this three equation. Ah, that is the answer. Zero. 0 0.5, 0 0.05 t square, 0 0.05, uh, uh, 10 to the power of 2, so it's 5 joule. So you got that, eh? <laughs> Clear? Yes, sir. So if you plot this, if you plot this, so it becomes like this. This is t, this is w, 0, then now for that is that and that. So this is a 10. So these are quadratic equation, eh? T square, eh? The T square is uh, like this or like this? T square is like that lah, eh? So that is if you plot, eh? So this is actually, uh, VT, this is the WT. So that is we cover for the capacitor. The second uh, energy storage uh, element is the inductor. An inductor is basically that this is the uh, 
a part for inductor. Basically, that is a coil, right? That you wound uh, around the core. So it can be like this. It can be like this. And this is actually the SMT version. And this is also SMT version, but it's called a uh, square coil. This was designed by Motorola in uh, 1990. I was working with this in 1990 in Motorola Penang using this, experimenting by this at, at that time. Uh, nobody was uh, was using this. So Motorola is the first one to design this. So I was part of it. Nah, uh, use this uh, this this type of component. Experimenting with this uh, square coil, right? So what is an inductor? An inductor component, an electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field. So, so inductor are typically made by winding a coil of wire around a core. A core is this lah, yeah. which can be an insulator or a ferromagnetic material. Yeah. So it can be uh, what we call it plastic, can be paper, can be anything. Yeah. When a current flows through the coil, a magnetic field is established. So the circuit symbol for the inductor is this macam coil. Eh? This is the symbol for inductor. And this is uh, physically how it looks like. Eh? So you have a cross section A. You have an, how many number of turns and you have the length. Eh? And also the core material also you have some uh, what we call it permeability. Eh? So the inductor marked with the letter L, which is called the inductance of the coil and is measured by units of Henry. So one Henry uh, is one Henry is actually equal to volt per uh, second per ampere. The inductance is the is the property whereby an inductor exhibits opposite opposition to the to the change of current flowing through it measured in henry in the ideal inductor resistance of a wire is considered as zero so that the constant current through the inductor will flow freely without causing a voltage drop so an ideal inductor tidak ada resistance in the practical uh, inductor it has some resistance so it has a voltage drop so in this case we assume uh, it's an ideal uh, inductor, so there is no voltage drop. So the ideal inductor acts as a short circuit during the DC current. And however, inductance reduce current in the AC circuits. Okay. So in the DC, it behaves as a short circuit. So it's opposite of the capacitor. In the and this is the IV relationship. IV is the uh, current voltage relationship for the inductor. The inductor voltage is given by VL of T is equal to L D I L T D T. Remember just now the capacitor is basically this is actually I and V, right? So it's always uh, the opposite between the capacitor and the inductor. Right? Where N is the number of the, uh, or N, L is given by N square mu A over L. Mu is the permeability of the core a mu okay this mu is the permeability of the core and mu naught is given as 4 pi 10 to the minus 7 henry per meter and a is the area of the core 
uh, the surface uh, the the cross section of the core. Uh, L is the length. This L is the length. A is the this area. And mu mu is actually the permeability of the core. Right? Here. And mu naught is actually 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Henry per meter. And the formula for the inductor's current is given by the ILT is equal to 1 over L integration of minus infinity to T of VL T prime D T prime. So all terbalik daripada capacitor. Kita tengok capacitor tadi. This is formula for current. This is formula for voltage in the uh, capacitor. But for the inductor, this formula for voltage and this is a formula for current. If the current flowing through the inductor at time t equal to t naught is known to be i naught or this is called in initial condition. So therefore, I L T equal to 1 over L integration from T naught to T uh, V L T prime D T prime plus I naught. So you have the initial condition yeah, when T is greater or equal to T naught. So the energy store in the inductor, now the formula is half 1 over 2 half L I L square T. You remember if the capacitor just now is V C T is equal to half C V C square T, right? So for the uh, inductor is the current, not the voltage. And the unit is still the same, it's joule. And inductor act like a short circuit to DC and its current cannot change. This one current cannot change abruptly. Kalau capacitor is the voltage cannot change abruptly. For inductor is current cannot change abruptly. Inductor in parallel. Inductor in parallel behaves like a the you say you you use you use the formula. It's the same as resistor in parallel. Basically, 1 over L equivalent is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 plus until 1 over Ln. So if you have a circuit like this, okay, so L equivalent is equal to this. So from here, you use that formula and you got that value for inductor in parallel. Clear? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. And for inductor in series, for inductor is in, in series, yeah. I hear you, sir. Huh? Can you hear me? is similar to the resistor the formula is similar to the resistor in series l equivalent equal to l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l n and comes like that so inductor in series combine like a resistor in series <laughs> Now, if you have a circuit like this and you are given the I and you need to find the V across the inductor. So you need to do the differentiation. So differentiation of this is equal to zero. Differentiation of this is basically uh, you get 0 0.1 over 4, uh, 0 0.25. In differentiation of this is equal to 0. 
differentiation of this is basically that this drop out, this drop out, you get minus 0 0.1 over 4, so minus 0 0.25, and differentiation of this is 0. So if you plot, basically that, this is the voltage plot. So basically this here and this here, this here, this here. So this is the slope of 0 0.25. This is zero slope of minus zero point two five. Right? Clear. Another example. <coughs> Another example. You need to find the inductor's current. You are given the voltage. Right? And it's given as zero. For T less than zero second, minus 10 millivolt for z between zero to one second, and equal to zero for T greater than one second. And L is 10 millihenry, and the initial condition I naught is equal to zero M. So this is the solution. Basically, that you need to integrate the voltage. And IL P1 is a zero. Huh? This is zero. So the integration of VT, basically, if you look at this, this one, the integration is zero. This also integration with zero. So the only one that you need to do is for this part is from zero to one. So you have the integration from one over L from 0 to t prime of minus 10 times 10 to the minus 3 d t prime plus i naught i naught is 0 and uh, t t prime is 1 here okay? so when you do the integration you get minus 10 to the minus 2 divided by 10 to the minus 2 t so equal to minus t m okay and why this is minus one? Because this is the initial condition in the integration. Because the integration is the integration of one over L from one to infinity uh, of zero mm -hmm. dt plus I not prime. I not prime is basically this. What is at one second at here? So this is equal to zero plus uh, I at one second is minus one M. So equal to minus one. So that's why you get minus one here. Clear? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Alhamdulillah, sir. Okay. Energy start in the inductor. Just use this formula. L is given as 10 milli Henry. <coughs> I is given as I not as given as this. <laughs> A. So you just plug in the value one half uh, 10 milli Henry times 8 square 64. So it becomes 32 times 10 to the minus 2 is 320 milli joule. Calculating the equivalent. Eh? L equivalent. So how do you do this? You find if you so want I'm to find the L equivalent from here, you calculate from here. So from here basically you do this first. Inductance in series, you add, right? So 40 plus 20 become 60. So 60 
parallel with the, with the t becomes 1.5 eh 1.5 pula uh, 1 over 30 plus 1 over 60 is equal to uh, 2 over 30 uh, 2 over 60 plus 1 over 60 is equal to 60 over 3 so becomes 20 right yes sir so become 20 so you have basically 20 here so 20 with 100 120 so 120 120 parallel with 40 so you have 120 uh this is 20 1 over 20 plus 1 over 40 so become uh, 1 over 120 plus 3 over 120 so 120 over 4 so become over 30 30 right yes sir so becomes 30 here so 30 and 20 becomes 50. 50. 50. 30. 50, sorry. 30, 30 and 20 becomes 50. 50 parallel with 50 becomes 25 milli Henry. Clear? Clear, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. Find the energy stored in each capacitor and inductor under steady state condition in the circuit as shown. Hmm. How are you going to do this? Steady state. What happened? Steady state. What happened to the capacitor? What happened to the capacitor DC? Open, right? Open. This is also open. This is also open. What happened to the inductor? Become short, sir. Become okay, sir. Short. So now, what do you need to do? Because if you want to find the, the what do you call it, um, the energy stored, so basically you need to remember Vc is equal to half C Vc for inductor one half l i l right so you need to find the voltage here you need to find the voltage here you need to find the voltage here and you need to find the current here Okay, how can you find those values? Hmm? You can use mesh analysis and you can use, or you can use the nodal analysis. So what you have now, these circuits, what you have is that six, two, four, eight. Right? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, so you can find the where is the voltage here? Where is V1? V1 
4 parallel with 8. What's the value? 4 parallel with 4 parallel with 8. 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4 is equal to uh, 1 over 8, eight over plus 2 over 8. So equal to 3 over 8. So it's really 8 over 3. So 8 over 3 here. Yeah, the register here. So you use the voltage divider. V1 is equal to 8 over 3 times 6 divided by 8 over 3 plus 2 equal to uh, 8 times 2 over um, 8, uh, 3, 3, 3, 3, 6, 8 plus 6 is 8 plus 6, how many? 8 plus 6, uh, 14 plus over 3. So it's equal to uh, 16 over 14 times 3 is equal to 16. how many? So you get the V1. When you get the V1, this is actually V1. Betul? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you do the math? What's the value? 16 uh, times 3 divided by 14. 2 times 7, 2 times uh, 8, 24 over 7. Betul ke? So 24 over 7 is, uh, what's the value? Twenty-four over seven. Is it three point four three? Three point four three. So three point four three here. So three point four three here. And uh, so, if three point four three here, what is the energy stored in the? Two, two farad capacitor is 2.43 here. So basically that WC equal to 1 over 2 times 2 times uh, 24 over 7. So you get the value. So basically is 24 over 7 joule here. It's stored in this. Now, uh, <coughs> for here, store here because the voltage is zero. So, does it store energy here? No. It's zero. Right? And what about here? Here is the voltage across here. It's also V1. So 1 over 2 divided by 3, uh, 1 over 2 times 3 times 24 over 7. So you get the value. Try to calculate. Eh? So that is how you do it. Uh, you, you solve this for the uh, energy stored in the inductor you have to find the current so what is the current here if the voltage here is uh, 24 over 7 so the current here is basically 24 over 7 divided by 8 uh, because this is the resistance is 8. So you get what's 
what? You get D over seven, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if the current is three over seven, so therefore the energy stop here is basically one half times two times three over seven. Right? Just check whether what I've done is correct or not because uh, I just do uh, uh, what I call it, just chonga. So I want you to do proper calculation. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. You do it on your own, whether you get it or not. This is important, eh? Because in every test, it's always come this kind of question. At least one question. Right? Okay, sir. So, this is also the same thing. So, I leave it to you to, to solve. Eh? This one, uh, I want you to, uh, to do on your own. Try to solve this. So basically that, in summary, we have this actually, the R RLC, uh, uh, what are called elements. Huh? For resistance, the unit is ohm, and the voltage formula is V equal to IR, basically the ohm's law. Uh, v equal to RI. For current, is I equal to V over R. For power is actually P equal to V I V I or equal to I square R or equal to uh, V square over R. Right? Yes, sir. For inductance, the value is in Henry. The voltage is equal to L D I D T and the current is actually one over I integration of V D T plus K1. K1 is the initial condition. And the power is P equal to VI equal to LI DI DT. This is the formula for power. Okay. And for capacitor, the unit is in Farad. And the voltage is V equal to 1 over C integration of I DT plus K2, the constant. And the current is I equal to C dV dt. And the power is P equal to V I equal to C V dV dt. Okay. So this is actually the uh, summary of the formula that you need to understand. Okay. Right. For the, these three uh, elements. Uh, resistance, inductance, and capacitance. Okay. That is for today. Any question? So I want you to do, uh, to complete this example six and seven on your own. But so that uh, when you do on your own, you will remember uh, better. Uh, this is actually important because uh, most of the that some, uh, you will get a similar question in the test. Eh? Okay, sir. Yeah.